Hello, my name is Anton Arhipov and this is Springtime in Kotlin. Welcome back to our YouTube channel where we talk all the things Kotlin. Please subscribe to stay updated. Last time we started implementing tests for our Spring Boot application with JUnit. And we learned that it's possible to use Spring Boot test annotation to implement integration tests. However, our application is currently very simple. It is using H2 database for storing the data. H2 is a very convenient database for testing. But in real life projects, you would be using something like MySQL, Postgres, or even Oracle database. And using a different database for testing than the one you use in the real project might not be a good idea. This might be a source of bugs in your database interaction layer. So it's better to test with the same database that you use in the project. The question is, can we automate our tests if we use the real database? Apparently we can. We can use test containers library in our tests to start a Docker container with a real database for the duration of the tests. Before we start, let's actually migrate our application to use Postgres instead of H2. The good part is that we don't need to do much for that. First, I'm going to add a few dependencies to the project. In my Gradle build file, I have to add the new dependency for the Postgres JDBC driver, right here. And I also added a few dependencies for test containers, the test containers core itself, then the integration with JUnit and the integration for Postgres database. Besides the dependencies, we need to update the schema definition since now we are using Postgres database specific syntax. And also the application properties file needs to be updated to point at the correct driver, the URL, the username and the password. And that is actually all we need to replace H2 with Postgres in our demo application. Now, if we want to run the application, we just need to start an instance of the Postgres database. For instance, we can start a Docker container with the database from the con line. Now let's learn a bit about test containers. What is test containers? Let's read. Test Containers is a Java library that supports JUnit tests, providing lightweight throwaway instances of common databases, Selenium web browsers, and anything else that can run in a Docker container. Perfect. It means that if we need an external resource for testing in the application, we can start a Docker container with that resource for the duration of the tests. And it can be managed with the API from the test sources. That's really convenient. Here is a simple test where we are going to start the container and verify if it's up and running. The test should be annotated with test containers annotation. And to start the container in a JUnit test, we need to declare a field that is annotated with container annotation. This is going to be an instance of a specific resource that we need. In this case, it is going to be a Docker image with Postgres database. At this point, I have to explain one thing about Kotlin and Java interoperability. In Java, it is possible to implement self-typing using recursive generics. And this feature gives us the ability to implement fluent APIs in Java. However, this is something that Kotlin does not implement as it has a different approach to design of such API. And test containers is using recursive generics in its API. And in order to use it from Kotlin, we need to do the following trick. First, we can create an instance of the specific type where we need to satisfy the compiler by providing nothing as a generic parameter. And next, once we have the instance of this type, we can invoke the Fluent API methods within the scope of the new instance by using the apply function, like this. If 
If we need to declare such fields in many different places in our tests, it makes sense to extract this code into a function. So here I have a top-level function that creates an instance of PostgreSQL container, and it applies a block of code that will invoke the with functions to configure the behavior of the container instance. The container will start for each test from scratch. By the way, it's not great if we have a lot of tests and start the container each time. So it's actually possible to start the container once per test class, and for that the specific field must be static. In Kotlin, since we have no static keyword, we can satisfy this requirement by declaring this field in a companion object. The container will start before the test, so now in the test we can verify if the container is up and running. Let's run this test now and see how it executes. Make sure that Docker is running on this machine. We can see the test succeeded. Let's take a look at the log. We can see that test containers is logging the debug messages. It prints the information about Docker environment. So it discovers Docker environment automatically and we don't have to configure anything. We can see it starts a required container. Then it executed uh, an init script for creating the database table for our application. And then the test succeeds. Let's see if we can make our existing tests to work with this. I will declare the same container instance as a field in my demo application tests class. The important thing here is that we can't hard code the database URL anymore. So I'm going to remove the properties attribute from the Spring Boot test annotation. We somehow need to tell our Spring application to which database should it connect for testing. And of course, in Spring, there is a feature for such purpose. There is a dynamic property source annotation that we can use to annotate a function that takes dynamic property registry as an argument. We can give this function any name. However, it's not as simple as it seems. The test engine requires it to be static, which means it should be declared in a companion object. That alone is not enough as well. You have to make sure that this function is annotated with the JVM static annotation. So what do we need this function for? Using this function, we can override the specific parameters in the application.properties file. In our test, we need to set a database URL and the user and the password. So I'm going to use my container field that already contains all this information. Okay, this looks good. We only have to make sure that our test is annotated with the proper annotation, and then we can execute the test. This executes quite fast, and let's see what's in the log. We can see test containers detected the Docker environment, It starts the Postgres instance again, but it does it only one time. So the database is reused for all the tests that are executed for this test class. But it also means that the data that one test produced will be visible to the other tests. Maybe this is something that you would like to avoid. And here is a simple example of how we can implement a cleanup function so that all the tests would clean up the data that was produced during the execution. I'll inject an instance of JDBC template, and I'm just going to use that in the function that is annotated with after each annotation. So after each test, this function will be invoked and we will make sure that the database table is empty. Today you learned how to test your Spring Boot application with test containers, the awesome Java library for integration testing.
This time I was using test containers just to start a database instance. However, you can use it to start any resources that can run in a Docker container. So check it out, it's a really useful library. Let me remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we talk all the things Kotlin. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.